Okay, this is the second section of chapter four, moments, and this is about resultant moments. And the last section, uh, we saw that we can work out a moment by doing the size of the force multiplied by the distance of that force from the pivot point. So this is the perpendicular distance from pivot point. Okay, normally in diagrams it's labeled as the point P, P for pivot I'm guessing. And what we also saw is that um, a moment can act in one of two directions. It can act in a clockwise direction, it can act in a anti-clockwise direction. And what we can do, we can find the resultant moment by adding those together. So the resultant moment, the resultant moment is the sum of the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments. Now, to do this, what we need to do is to maybe call one direction positive and one negative. So what I tend to do, and you might do this slightly differently, is if it's a clockwise moment, which means um, the thing is trying to rotate, the ruler or whatever is trying to rotate in that direction, I call it, in my working, I'll write it as a positive number. If something is tending to want to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, which means like that, I will call it a negative in my working. So all I do is, if I want to find a resultant moment, I just find the sum of these, and then my answer will tell me whether um, the whole system, the whole thing is moving in a clockwise direction, if I got a positive answer at the end, or an anti-clockwise direction, if I get a negative answer at the end. So decide which way you're gonna do it. I decide to call clockwise positive, anti-clockwise negative, you find the sum, and the sign of your answer will tell you what direction the whole thing's moving in. Or actually, if the, the sum of your answer is zero, it's telling you like they're cancelling each other out, it's not gonna move in either direction. So let's do some examples where we've got some resultant moments. Okay, so here, um, I always like to draw a moments diagram. This pretty much is a moments diagram. There isn't any extra um, working on there. Um, um, or any extra sort of lines or things that I need to rub out. But I am going to draw the direction these things are tending to uh, move in. Okay, so actually it's probably best to start by looking where the pivot point is. Okay, so our pivot point is here. That point is fixed. Okay, so let's go through. Let's start with this force here. Remember. Imagine that's your bit of ruler and it's fixed at that end. Which direction is it going to want to rotate in? It's going to ro want to rotate that way. It's going to ro want to rotate in an anti-clockwise di direction. So I'll put that there. Okay. Uh, this force here. Okay, so my ruler is only going to this point. This force is trying to make it rotate also in an anti-clockwise direction. And if you sort of looked at the diagram, if you ignored this bit over here, you've got basically this pivot point, that's going that way, that's going that way. They're sort of acting together, aren't they? They're both going to make it rotate in the same direction. And then over here, this is my longer ruler here and that force going up. So this is going to want to rotate around this way in a clockwise direction. So we'll put that in. OK, so I know which ones I'm going to make positive and which one I'm going to make negative. So the clockwise ones I'm going to call positive in my working and the anti-clockwise ones I'm going to make negative. 
Right, so my positive one is, my positive moment is 5 times 2. Um, the negative one, uh, the first negative one is going to be 4 times 1. Actually, let's correct this. The distance is actually 3. Yeah, so that's, I just looked at this bit. I should have looked at that whole distance there. That's three from the pivot point. So I corrected my mistake just in time. Five times three, one times four. And then this one's going to be one times three or three times one for that one. That's also going to be a negative. So negative three times one. Easy calculations. 15 minus four minus three. And we end up with... I'm struggling. Eight as a final answer, eight Newton meters. Now, the sign of our answer is positive. So, since this is a positive number, it means that the resultant moment is going to be clockwise. So, eight Newton meters clockwise, or you might say acting in a clockwise direction. Okay. Right. Right. So, here we have these um, uh, angled forces so we need to work out these perpendicular distances so I need to work out um, this well, let's put it in the right place so from the pivot point a perpendicular distance there we go to the force I'm gonna have to work out what that is and uh from here to here here's my right angle i need to work out what those distances in orange are so i'm going to draw the diagram separately i find that more helpful and then um all i'm going to have on this diagram is the perpendicular distance from the pivot point and the force so my final diagram actually without all the other stuff that I don't need is going to look like this yeah so I've taken out all the other bits that I don't need so I've got the four newtons but what I need to add on to here are the distances so we'll work out this distance here opposite the angle the hypotenuse is three so that length is going to be three sine 40 so let's put that in three sine 40 and we're going to work out this distance here so it's a bit bit odd looking but actually this is the right angle here uh, this is the hypotenuse um, the hypotenuse is four i've got another force i'm going to add on in a minute so um, the hypotenuse is four the angle opposite the side i want to find is uh, 80 so it's going to be four sine 80 so four sine 80. I've realized I've got another force here uh, which I'm going to draw on which goes like this now in this case the we do have the perpendicular distance because there's a right angle here yeah there's a right angle there that is perpendicular that really should be drawn on the diagram showing that it's um, uh, perpendicular not quite sure why there's no right angle symbol there, but it should be. Um, so that distance here is three. Right, let's now work out what direction. So this is trying to go around that way. This is trying to rotate that way. This is trying to rotate around that way. Let's put our pluses and minuses on. Right, uh, this one up here, negative anti-clockwise this one's going positive clockwise this one's going anti-clockwise right so all i need to do now is write my stuff out so the positive one is going to be five times four sine 80 that's the the clockwise one minus four times three sine 40 that's an anti-clockwise one there's another anti-clockwise one so it's negative uh, 6 times 3, 
OK, and all we need to do is to work that out. So that's going to be 5 times 4 sine 80 minus 4 times 3 sine 40. Let's try again. I need to put some brackets in. 5 times 4 sine 80 minus 4 times 3 sine 40 minus 6 times 3 and I get negative 6.018729 so three significant figures that will be negative 6.02 so negative 6.02 newton meters okay so what does that tell me the negative tells me here that resultant is anti-clockwise so I can write down as my final answer that the resultant moment is 6.02 newton meters anti-clockwise okay so we've got uh, two forces acting on this um, around this pivot point here P um, so our rulers our imaginary rulers aren't actually on this diagram yet um, they're going to be here like that and this is the distance I want to find here and then this one well to make it meet at a, like perpendicularly um, I need to extend the force now that doesn't matter um, forces are vectors these are vector diagrams so whether we move the arrow around uh, well not move it around but whether we make it longer or shorter doesn't matter the size and the direction is is what's important and the size is either 7 or 4 in this diagram and the direction well we're not changing the direction so you know I've made this longer well it doesn't matter it's I still want to call it 4 and it's still pointing in the same direction and you'll see when I do my diagram here and this is my pivot point that actually like you know well I've, I've made this longer for the 7 but it's pretty much pointing in the same direction yeah and it's still 7 um, and the 4 down here well, it's still pointing in the same direction it's still four so what we need to work out is the length of those missing sides now on this question um, this is the hypotenuse of both of those right angle triangles the sides we want to find are opposite to the angles so uh, this one here this is going to be 8 sine 25 and this one here will be 8 sine 35 yeah you, you pretty much notice in most of these questions it's the um, uh, always sign something sign something okay right so uh, let's write the directions down so this is trying to make it rotate around this way so we'll call that a positive because it's clockwise uh, this is trying to make it rotate around that way so we'll call that a negative on our working because it's anti-clockwise so now we can do our working 8 sine 25 minus because it's anti-clockwise 8 sine 35 and all we need to do is to put that in our calculator and we get the answer so oh, I've missed out the force times the distance so I need to put here I've just put the distance down the force times the distance so four times sorry about that missed that out so seven times sine 25 minus four times um, 835 gives us 5.312176694 so I will round that to three significant figures to 5.3.
one newton meters now because it's positive that means that that 5.31 newton meters is acting in a clockwise direction so basically what that means is is if you had these forces acting around this pivot point here that the whole thing would basically be moving around in a clockwise direction yeah because this moment is bigger than this moment causing it to spin around basically in that imagine you've got two people and a person pushing around this way is stronger than the tr person trying to push the other way well you know that force is still there but like you know this person's stronger it's going to eventually go around that way with a um, a total moment of or a resultant moment of 5.31 newton meters yeah okay you should now be able to do exercise 4b and it's actually on pages 74 to 76 not just page 74